You know, I attended a vigil a couple of weeks ago and I was touched by this woman who got up and spoke. And this woman, she, she, she was an abuser herself and she lost three boys to opioid abuse. And that was so touching to me. All right, I, I mean, I, I just basically, I got goosebumps. I and mean, after, after the woman spoke, I went her and I said, hey, so much courage getting up and speaking about this, um, about this epidemic. I had a worker, I had a worker uh, in 2012. Okay, I took him in because I knew he needed help. He was 21 years old. All right, he was a friend of a friend. And um, this kid needed help. And I constantly had it. And I said to him, I said, I can help you, but you need to help yourself also. Okay, this kid worked for me for four years. He, he, was, he was using, and um, I think I counseled him. And now he's a, he, he, he works. He's a successful um, salesperson for, um, for a car dealership on 114. He came out of that. So we, we need to work with the, these people. Um, we need to lobby the state legislature, get more people involved with the council because a lot of these people have come from troubled, troubled families and they don't have the council at home. All right, so they go into the streets and they feel abandoned and they feel hopeless. And we, we do a lot of but more needs to be done. More council needs to be done. So, as an alderman, I would put forth um, an order to work with um, the state and um, congressional leadership to, to make sure that the funding is always there so that they get the care and need that they need because it's, it's, it's spiraling out of control. I mean, it's an epidemic that's really spiraling out of control. And the, the resources need to be available so that we don't leave, we're not losing these kids because there's a lot of talent out there and if they just get the counseling needed, they'll find a way to help themselves. Thank you, Elliot. Matt McLaughlin. Yes, thank you, Joe, for that question. And I attended the vigil as well, as well as the previous three before that. And I also helped found some of the overcome addiction. I assisted other people to found that organization and they control it and they run it the way that they see fit. I'm very proud to support them in their efforts. Uh, opiate ep epidemic was the one and two reasons why I ran for office to begin with, opiate epidemic and affordable housing. These are the things that impacted my life growing up. Uh, I served in the military and we lost more people from opiate abuse than the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. And again, the first thing I did when I got on the board, within weeks, I said I would like police and fire department to carry Narcan and the city was happy to oblige and I was very happy for that. And just a personal story, I had a friend that I played football with, uh, found out that he overdosed one day, he was revived by Narcan. And after that, he got his life together, he's doing well, he's clean, and I'm proud to know that I played a small part in making sure that there was one less mother who was uh, seeing her child die in the city. Uh, there's more that needs to be done. Uh, we've done a lot of criminal justice reform in the city. I was happy, uh, one of the things I did, a uh, basic fact, a basic thing, when uh, we had resident staff meetings and the police brought up their data about crime, I would always ask, what are the drug crimes? What is the drug crime percentage? And I would repeatedly ask, and they say, oh, well, you know, we can get you that information. I said, no, I want the public to have that information. I want people to know what's going on in the community. And because of that, and because of other efforts that I've worked with the police and substance abuse treatment groups, uh, we have a great criminal justice uh, system in some of where we prioritize treatment over incarceration. People can actually go to the police station and say, I have a problem, I need help. And instead of arresting them, they're going to find help for them. Uh, there's a lot more that needs to be done. Uh, we do have medical marijuana clinics coming to Somerville, which is going to generate millions of dollars of tax revenue. Alderman Conway and myself and everyone on the board agreed that we'd like to see that money get put into treatment because there's just not enough money on the state and federal level to deal with this.